In this tutorial, we will see how to build a finite element model from a digitalis lattice definition. At the end of tutorial 1, we had defined a homogeneous lattice structure and stored the definition in text files, such as these over here, which stores separately information about the node definitions, the strut definitions, um, and then additional structural information about which cell contains which nodes and which threads. And so from this, we are going to build a finite element model that will allow us to understand how our construct behaves mechanically under loading. So first, we will import our lattice definition using the read scaffold component over here, which we can find under the utilities panel. So it has now imported the definition. Um, if we want to check that it has actually imported something, we can quickly bake the points that correspond to the node definitions and just check that there is some definition here and they kind of make sense relative to the scaffold we want to build. So that seems to be the case here. Um, and then we will actually move on to build the finite element model. So that will involve three main steps. Um, first, defining the finite elements themselves, so either beam or shell elements over here, um, then specifying material properties, and then finally defining loads and boundary conditions. So all the components to build this digitalis finite element models can be found in the model assembly panel. So first, to define the beams, we are going to connect information from the beam definition or the strut definition text files to the define beams component. So that means connecting the IDs of these elements, the nodes uh, that define their extremities, and then potentially specifying normals for the cross sections. In this case, we can define circular cross sections. Um, and so, for example, let's say a strut radius of 0.1 millimeter and then assign it to the same elements, so plugging in the struts IDs. Then let's say we want our scaffold to be contained within two flat surfaces. Then we can also define shell elements, um, for example, defining here the top rectangle and the bottom rectangles as surfaces that we want to see as plate structures. And so we can mesh these rectangles and obtain something like this and same at the bottom and turn them into shell elements by connecting these meshes to a defined shell element. Then obviously whether there are beam elements or shell elements they need to be assigned material properties to be able to understand how they will behave under the mechanical loading. And so for this, we will define materials here using define material components, assign these materials to specific elements using their IDs over here. So let's say we define a first material with a specific name, specific Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And I'm going to assign this first material to the shell IDs and the second material to the strut IDs. So I'm going to find the strut IDs and plug it in plug them in. Finally, we want to be able to define loading and boundary conditions to our scaffold. So let's say we want the scaffold to be fixed on the left hand side. On these points, for example, we use the define boundaries condition, plug in the points we want to fix, and then decide in which direction we will want to fix them. Um, so can, we can fix, for example, the three translations and the three rotations. And then if we want to specify loads, we will also define specific points where we want to apply the loading. Here it will be applied on all the points on the mid surface to the right. Specify a force as a vector. Um, so here, for example, we've only applying vertical force downwards. We can also specify a moment. And then we will plug all of this information into the one 
component that will generate the finite element model, which is the build digitalis model component. So we will plug in the boundaries, the loads, the material properties, the different element the different cross sections and we also need to specify the the actual coordinates of all the nodes we've used for these definitions um, and they come from the read scaffold component as well and so now, although we still cannot see it in, um, in the actual 3D space here, we have all the information we need for a proper finite element model. So now the next step is to export all this uh, information contained in the Digitalis assembly to commercial finite element software that will be able to solve those finite element simulations. So with Digitalis, there are two options to do this. The first one is to export to Caramba, uh, with which we'll be able to run finite element simulations with the Caramba plugin, so within the Grasshopper and Rhino environment. And the other solution is to export our Digitalis model to Abacus. So first, let's export it to Caramba. And we can actually preview it using the Caramba components this time, so the model view from Caramba plugin. If we plug a Caramba model into the model view from the Caramba plugin, this is uh, the Caramba model we obtain. So as you can see, we have all the nodes and struts connecting them. We have the shell elements making out the plates at the top and bottom of the structure. We have all the boundary conditions on the left hand side and the forces we're applying to the constructs on the right. Now from this, uh, we'll be able to use the Caramba plugin itself uh, to run different kind of simulations using all the native components. Another solution is to export our Digitalis model to Abacus. So plug it in giving it a specific name, and then it will write an Abacus input file into our working directory. So it should have now created a Digitalis model here. Now, if we go to Abacus itself, import this model, And here it is in Abacus format. We can still see all the struts um, and the shell elements making out the plates, right? And so now, if we actually uh, build or run the simulation from Abacus, we go to Job and create a simulation and start running it. And so after a few minutes, we can see in the bottom window here in the Abacus user interface that the job has been completed successfully. Um, and we can then see the result of our simulation Here it is. Now, obviously, because we've written uh, a proper Abacus input file, we can also make all sorts of uh, edits to the model from Abacus itself without going back to our Grasshopper template. 
so if we go back to the actual definition, um, we could decide to change the beam definitions, uh, their position, erase some elements. Um, we can change the sections, obviously, so the different profile of the section. We can also change material properties, for example. So here we have our two materials, but we could decide to change the Young's modulus we initially set to another value um, and rerun the simulation. So it's now a completely independent uh, abacus model. The grasshopper template used in this tutorial can be downloaded from the website. And then in the next tutorial, we'll see how to use those finite element models within Digitalis to optimize the structure of the lattice to specific loading conditions.